We are so glad that you have joined us for today's session of Forging Leaders. I am Karen and I'm here with Dimitri. You really are. And I really, um, yeah. this, she this is, is Karen. legit. Okay. <laughs> Saw a face on the missing persons list. And, so, um, it's true. That's really who I am. So glad she's back. It's been a long three years. But uh, welcome back. Me and my face. What's it? Basketball. Yeah, there you go. There you go. But um, guys, yeah. Well, um, you know, if you're still with us, thank you so much. And uh, coming back, and you remember last session, we were talking on those three forms of church government. We're not going to go through all that again. But um, what we want to focus on in this session is looking at those three forms. Of which one is best? Yeah. Well, which one is best? It, it's a good question. Well, let, let's just, before you, we kind of get into that, maybe we can just refresh um, the three different ones that we looked at. Okay, so we the three different models we looked at the senior led the i forgot the big word that you used you want to refresh us okay so let's go through it number one hierarchical okay the only words i can think of is big kahuna on yeah, the top. episcopalian episcopalian there we okay go. there you go okay and then we got the congregational, congregational. okay that. and then we got the eldership run eldership see yeah. i was paying attention okay good okay so now you've got three and we all know you get good better best okay so which is the good one you're going to say the good the bad and the ugly okay well sometimes <laughs> sometimes it's possible okay um some of you watching you bit burnt out on church leadership because ugh. okay but any case you, which is the best one? Well, the best one really, um, if, if we're going to be measuring, the best one would be what is the most biblical one. And if we say what is the most biblical, mm. uh, it depends what part of the Bible you're looking at. If you're looking at the book of Judges where everyone's doing right, then you say, well, they're congregational. Mm. If you're looking at the book of Exodus and you say, well, Moses leading Israel, okay, well, hierarchical. But what's important is where in the scripture we are looking. Mm. Okay, if we're looking and we're talking and we are the New Testament church well we want to make sure we're looking in the right place of scripture we're looking in the book of acts and we're looking in the epistles okay mm. this is all the books that are concerned with the church so um, this is something that is so crucial to us now to give you a clue if we were just going to consider um, church government look at jesus okay mm. so jesus comes to earth he begins his ministry what does he immediately do Gets disciples. Gets disciples. How many? Twelve. Okay. Twelve is a picture. Thank you for answering that for me. I would never have got okay. it correct if you didn't. Yeah. Well, you know, I know maths wasn't always okay. You are good maths at maths. Maths was my strong. Maths point. was your strong point. Okay. It so, still is. <laughs> don't you love that number twelve? Okay. So, um, so he picks a team. Okay. So right there at the get go, you can see plural leadership right there mm -hmm. okay you've got peter always mentioned first who thought he was the leader have pointed himself but no um peter was like <laughs> right up okay one of the early church yeah. leaders okay so but it was always in a team kind of environment and um, so there's a lot of what we want to look at is this now uh, again suffice to say we've experienced all of those three <laughs> it was kind of funny order but we started we were born, we didn't have a choice in this matter, but we were born into congregational church style government. Okay, so both grew up as two little Baptist kids and um, so um, experienced that and then leaving that, going into uh, the church women Calvary Chapel that we were part of, being part of a more like Episcopal, like senior pastor led church government. And, um, and then of course coming out of that, into a eldership led team led kind of church movement now why did we do that okay what what what's the deal with it well let me share some history right here is um going back i'm gonna just get comfortable how okay long you do you want some water no it's good it's okay good. okay you're looking great by the way thank you I really try. good okay I try. so you're looking healthy I try okay as well. good so um we, we we you know going through this time and why did the question some people might be wondering, why did you guys change? Okay, why did you leave that more Episcopalian kind of model to go into a Presbyterian church oh, eldership led model? Why did you do it? Well, let me say, um, went, went through a time where I was feeling pretty exhausted in ministry. I was, I was very weary. My wife was not so well and I was trying to be mom and dad at home and I was trying to, I didn't do that so well, by the way. But, um, and, and stretched in ministry, we had a lot of ministries going on in the church, so much happening. 
And then to realize that some of the visions that God had given me, and I thought, I'm never going to fulfill these in my lifetime. I need something that's going to, um, I, I need to see leaders being multiplied. And um, so I'm going through this whole time and just really questioning before the Lord. And at the same time, I'm really struggling with this thing of you, the senior pastor. And so um, I once um, saw and I noticed this thing. It was like a bit of a flow diagram. And it was like passed up at the top and that, then that's your cute community <laughs> leaders and, and then local leaders and you know it's like passed at the top like ceo and I, I'm, I like i just go i don't feel comfortable with this anymore and i think i think it was the lord just mm. preparing me and saying hey dimitri i've got something different for you that i want you to uh, be with and so well the time came 2018 i fired myself I, literally I just said, okay, you're fired. <laughs> I did, okay, how, how would you say it? <laughs> oh, fired. And then I wept. No. <laughs> the words and I, I came home and told my wife, we I'll cannot myself. use on the screen. <laughs> okay. But um, it was the best firing I've ever had. And I, I've got fired times before. <laughs> I, I mean, remember, didn't you get fired after one night of waitering? Okay, I worked at a pizza <laughs> restaurant for one night. The and owner did not like you. me. Italians and Greeks, ugh, they don't get on so And then there was the post office. And then there was that golfing place. I didn't even get place, there. The place where you carried golf carts. And then, wasn't there that other place? Okay. Okay. So Afrikaans saying, it goes, hold your bed. Okay. <laughs> we'll talk about this I later. Think, I think we cannot be saying Okay. That. So, so <laughs> here I am. Tears in my eyes. Okay. Oh, but, by myself. But, you know, it was the most liberating and best decision I ever made to step out of a senior pastor role, to call in other men as fellow elders, to um, and then to change our whole model of church government, to take our constitution and um, reformat it mm. into such a way that fitted with the scriptures. And I think mm. that for me was the most liberating, the best thing when I could look at the Bible, open up the scriptures, open up Acts, open up the epistles and yeah. see that what we are doing is exactly, we're replicating the scriptures. Now, what we want to do with you for this time is we want to take you through some of those scriptures so that you can read and absorb them into your spirit and really uh, get an idea of what is a good model. This is one that we really put forward to you because it's scriptural. Mm -hmm. So, um, Let's take a look at that. The first scripture is Acts chapter 14 and verse 23. Um, if you want to read that, this is Paul and Paul and his party and they um, Barnabas and they are traveling. And when they had appointed elders for them in every church with prayer and fasting, they committed them to the Lord in whom they had believed. Okay, so you've got right over there, you've got the a reference to elders. Now notice this is a case for plural eldership. Um, it's uh, Some might say, well, they, they appointed, um, you know, there was one elder for that church, one elder for that church, one elder for that church. Mm -hmm. um, so they were basically senior pastors. No, they weren't. Okay, because it says elders in every church. Mm -hmm. Okay, now notice the importance. Now, what is important when you appoint elders? Well, the and who was doing the appointments? Well, Paul and Barnabas. The apostles. The apostles right. were doing that. Okay, and then obviously so you've got apostolic involvement. Yeah, right. and then I think what's really important that where it says with prayer and fasting, you know, they weren't just, you know, picking the most prominent in the community or the wealthiest. That's not the standard of that was set. It was chose in a spiritual way. The, the next scripture, Acts 15 and verse 6. Now the apostles and elders came together to consider this matter. Right. This is the church in Jerusalem. And um, what is key here is there, there was a time, there was a moment where they've got uh, this contention that arise in the church, a decision that needs to be made there. They're in the church in Jerusalem. And you see the apostolic and you see the eldership together, working together, praying together, seeking the Lord together to make a decision together. And again, it's one church but plural leadership. Mm. And so when it talks of the apostles, it's talking of Peter, it's talking of James, John, all th these guys that were the apostles of the Lord Jesus mm. with the elders. Um, one of the elders was the brother of Jesus, James, and we know of him and of course various others. They came together to consider this matter. In other words, mm. the decision 
didn't finally rest on one man saying this is what we decide we should do. It was the plural, the group mm. together. Paul in Acts chapter 20 and verse 17. It says there that now from Miletus he sent to Ephesus and called the elders of the church to come to him. Right. Okay. So you could call this an apostolic time. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is where uh, the apostle was moving around and he comes, calls the church together and he begins to minister into the elders. Again, mm -hmm. you can see there wasn't just one person. Yeah. It's plural. Yeah. The senior pastor of Ephesus, but there was the eldership mm -hmm. uh, that he called together. Um, another scripture, James 5 verse 14. Here's a good one. James 5 verse 14. It says that if anyone among you is sick, let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. Okay. So what's, what's your point, Karen? I think there were, James is saying call for the elders. You know, it's a plural. It's not call for one singular man. It's call for the, the team of leaders right. to come and pray. Okay. So if in the scriptural times, in these Bible times, if they were practicing a kind of form of leadership that just had one man leading a church, they would have surely said, they would have said, call the pastor, or they would have said, call the el elder, mm. singular. Yeah. But it really implies here that there was a plural form of church government mm. leadership. And um, it says, if one person is sick, let them call all the elders out mm. to minister together. And so, in fact, like what James is saying is there's power when the elders are ministering together. As a team. Yeah. Um, so here's a, here's a real key, I think, for us, is that we realize that when people, believers, are ministering together, there's the power of the Holy Spirit. People get mm -hmm. healed. People get ministered to, delivered. Um, and so that's such a, a beautiful, that's what I've experienced. Working together, ministering together with other elders and deacons. Yeah. We see the power of the Spirit upon this. Yeah. Big time. Okay. And I think the last scripture to look at there, we're Paul writing to Timothy. And I think Paul now giving Timothy instruction where he said in chapter 4, verse 14, Do not neglect the gift that is in you, which was given to you by prophecy with the laying on of hands of the eldership. Okay. So you've got that word there, the eldership. So it's really nice mm -hmm. that the scripture has even given a term um, for a group of elders, calling them the eldership, presbyterion. OK, yeah. that's the, the Greek term for that. And um, the right here again. So can you notice there's quite a few times in Scripture where you've got the eldership. So in this case, you've got the eldership who were prophesying, who were imparting a spiritual gift to Timothy, probably gifts of leadership, who were laying their hands on him together. Mm. So one person getting ministered to by a group. So that is totally, totally, totally scriptural. I love it. So from these scriptures, um, you, can, you can see that the churches, and this is a, just a straightforward observation from Acts and how many scriptures? We look at about five scriptures here where you can see in every case and every count, there was churches being led by elders mm. or eldership, the Presbyterian. So to answer the question, which form of church leadership, mm. church government is best? It's the one that is the most biblical. And we're looking at these scriptures, focusing especially on the book of Acts and on the New Testament epistles. Um, yeah. Any thoughts? Any words of wisdom? No, I, I think it's great. I mean, I think especially just for any, any pastors you're watching, you know, you've been sort of pulling the load up a steep hill for the last decade or year or two and you realize how exhausting it is and how much more that same picture you know kind of trying to pull up a, a, a cart when you've got a team to come alongside you and to do it together you know you don't I mean burnout is something so common and frequent in ministry when one man is trying to carry the load and the burden of, of the church by himself and so you know, really exhort you to to look at the scriptures and to pray and I think really Dimitri what you're saying is what's so key is that it's the men that you choose to come alongside you that first scripture that we read about praying and seeking the Lord don't just choose men who are, are, are um, qualified according to worldly standards but men who are qualified according to God's standards and Paul gives some wonderful qualifications for elders and to really use those as your your tick list and nothing else except when that we see that in the epistles as well right you know 
Um, the, the one thing, and I think this is something so, so frequent that we come across that you hear from pastors who are leading churches as they're sitting in the senior pastor position that they are literally wearing 10 hats. Mm. They've got, they're expected to be the evangelist when they want evangelism. They're expected to be the ones that are going to give the final word of how, you know, with counseling, with church government and everything. Yes, they can farm all those things out. Well, they certainly seem to be the worship leader as well. Yes, they are awesome. I did come across one of those. So, so you know, we, we can see all these kind of things. And what it is, is it just literally, you cannot cut the past up into so many pieces. Um, it's it's inhumane. Okay. It's as <laughs> tempting as that would be for some of us. All right, we want to <laughs> slash him because he's a horrible man. All right, okay. we're going to so, be closing up this week's session here at but, 40 um, Leaders. Yes, you know what we would advise, and, and if you're watching this, you're a leader and you're in one of the church, maybe you're holding that senior pastor position. Mm. The very best thing you can do, um, if you aren't able to change the constitution, you aren't able to change the whole form of church government, um, the next best thing is to call in a team of capable men, leaders who can mm. be your elders. And you can start calling yourself the elder and um, begin to work within the framework of a team. Yeah. That is Beautiful. the best. It's awesome. so good. No. So, there's hope. There's hope yes. out there. Okay. Awesome. Well, next session. What, what, what can we look forward to? You guys are not going to want to miss this out. It's called, we're looking at the need to intercede, how important it is to have prayer as your top priority. So join us next session here at Forging Leaders.